Okay. Beloved, we greet you in the name that is above every name. If you are alive today, you are living, you should count yourself grateful. You should be grateful to God, whether you are poor or you are not poor. As long as you are alive, God has given you today, you should be grateful. And look for that God who has given you life. This is all we have come to tell you. You may not have the knowledge of God, you might not know God, but at least when you hear the preachers talk and find out why we have been preaching to you, find out why are these guys here preaching? For God so love the world. How many of you will give your children to be killed for somebody? You will not do it. Jesus said, how many friends will die in the place of their friends? You will not do it. If, if you find out that you have been jailed, and after you come out of jail, you find that it was your friend who plotted you, and you end up in jail, you will not like that friend. Your friendship may come to an end. God loves us so much. And he sent Jesus. Now, do you know why Jesus came to die? You are taking it for granted. He died in your place. Jesus died so that you will not die eternally. Today you are alive and you think you control your life. We are telling you something that will befall you in the future. And you are not bothered. You think the way you go about your work every day will continue like that. Jesus, he sent prophets upon prophets upon prophets to save us. The prophets couldn't save us. So he came down himself. Now, because nobody can see God and leave. Nobody can see God and leave. Even people in the Bible that saw angels, they said they would die. Go and ask Manoah and the wife. Go and ask Gideon. Moses said to God, I want to see you. God said, you can't see me and leave. Nobody can see God. But when he decided he to save us, he came in the form of a man. And this is what baffles religious people, including Muslims. They say, how can God? Yes, because you have a myopic mind about God. Jesus is God in the flesh who came to the planet Earth and that he planted Bible said he measured the mountains on a scale before he put them on the earth he measured the whole waters on the earth in the hollow of his hands and the whole earth we are living on is like a drop of water from the fingertip of God yet this God decided to become man to save us from sin you have no clue what we, when we talk about sin. You have no clue the power of sin. Behind coronavirus, behind arthritis, behind headache, behind migraine, behind any form of sickness and disease, there is a spirit called sin. Sin is the reason why we grow old. Sin is the reason why you have romanticism. Sin destroys this earth. This earth was once upon a time a beautiful one. But sin has reduced this world to what it is today. Don't blame God. People are asking foolishly, if God is there, why are people dying? God doesn't kill. God gives life. When you sleep and you are snoring, do you know how you wake up? Do you even know how you sleep? Do you know how sleep knocks you? And when you wake up, instead of finding your maker and thanking, you go about bragging. Who are we? A whole king David said, who is man? That God, you are mindful of him. Who is man? Who are you? Our breath stinks. Who are we? If God takes his breath out of us, we are nothing. A friend of mine said that even if an animal died, they can even cook that animal and eat. If a tree falls down, they can even use it for firewood. But when you die, when human beings die, they can't eat you, they can't use you for firewood. Who are we? And we take ourselves so serious. 
We will tell you what you don't want to know. Jesus, do you know what God says he loves you? He has given us over 2,000 years to repent. Because if you don't repent, if you don't repent, and you breathe your last breath, where you will spend eternity, oh, where you will spend eternity, my brother and my sister, pause, stop, listen, listen to the preachers. We are not dumb. We are not insane. We love you. God loves you. But there is time. God has said time for everything. This grace period will pass. It's a grace period. It's a grace period. Today, if you are alive and you are hearing preachers, repent. Because very soon, you will not have us anymore. Jesus told the Pharisees, very soon you will not see me anymore. And they said, where is he going? Is he going to the Gentiles? Foolish question. Foolish question. Very soon, you people will not see us anymore. You will seek to see us, but you won't see us. Very soon, we will be gone out of this world. And the devil who you are living for, the devil you are serving, the devil who makes you raise your neck and pour alcohol into your throat, the devil who makes you smoke, when we, the church, are taken from this world, he will come and live with you. For seven years, you will see the real work of the devil. You will begin to cry to God. Bible said the devil will torture people so much that they will begin to curse God. Today you are free. We have been telling you God loves you. And you don't give a toss. You think you are smart? No. Bible is saying, the book of Isaiah said, a time is coming. There will be farming in this world. There will be farming. It will not be farming for food. It will not be farming for vaccine. It will not be farming for water. It will be farming for the word of God. This same Bible you have never read before. People will be roaming around, finding to find a place, a church, where they can go and hear the word of God. But you won't find it. You think you are cool? You think you are cool? Because you have got strength to move around. Because your maker has not snuffed his breath out of you. We told you God loves you. This is how God demonstrated his love towards us. That when we were yet sinners, even before you were born, Christ died for you. Hallelujah. Jesus hung on the cross for you. Every torture Jesus went through, he went through for you. That is what you will go through in the hands of devils and demons. Some of you, you have been tormented by them already. Some of you, already, I see dead people all around me. If you have been giving your life to Jesus, you think you are alive, you are dead. You have died. It's just a matter of time. And you slip into eternity in the hands of the devils. The demons that told you not to give your life to Jesus. They told you Jesus is a prophet. It's a lie. It's a lie. Have you seen any prophet walk on the sea before? They told you Jesus is a prophet. It's a lie. Prophets don't walk on sea. Prophets don't command sea. Prophets. Don't prophet die. All oh, the prophets die. They are in their tomb. Jesus is not a prophet. He's a son of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Anybody that does not confess that Jesus is the son of God is Antichrist. It's of the devil. Yes. The de Even Satan knows Jesus is the son of God. If you don't know, Satan. Satan confessed Jesus as a son of God. This is utter rubbish. Demons, evil spirits. Three times they confess that Jesus is the Son of God. I don't have your time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Beloved, there is something at stake that which moved Jesus to come all the way from heaven and become human being and sleep on this earth and walk on this dirty earth. That which moved Jesus. This is what the, the world is not understanding. You don't know what moved Jesus. That he didn't send an angel to come and do this work. We love you so much. If you people know what is coming your way. If you people know what is coming your way for rejecting Jesus. You all be here asking for forgiveness of sin. You'll be asking what must we do, Mr. Preacher? What must we do that we might inherit the kingdom of God? You know what we are doing? God said we should go everywhere and turn people from Satan's power 
unto God. If you are not a child of God, you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Satan controls your life. You are a property of Satan. You may be religious. This is hard truth. If you are not born again by the Spirit of God, you may be religious. You may pray ten times a day. You are still a property of Satan. So God said, we should come on the street and turn people from darkness to light. From the power of Satan unto God. That you will have an inheritance in God. Hallelujah. Some of you, you have one house mortgage. You have one mortgage on the earth. One mortgage and you think you are cool. Perishable things. But we have an inheritance. Incorruptible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Incorruptible. Unperishable. Turn from wickedness. Harden your heart, my brother, over there. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, you better do. You better do. For God so loved the world. This is the love of God. That when we were yet sinners, Christ died. When we were yet sinners, Christ died. The scripture says, in this was manifested the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. You don't have life yet. In this is the love of God. Not that we love God. We don't love God. The son of God scares us. Some people will say, they've been preaching about God and I feel alarmed. I feel depressed. You feel depressed about love? I don't see no girl that will feel depressed because a young man said, I love you. And you said you are depressed by the preacher telling you God loves you? What a fallacy. You are depressed because we told you God loves you. This is the love of God. When we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Not only did Christ die for us, but we have all sinned. And the wages of sin is death. But death comes in different ways. Death kills in different ways. Death can kill you. Sin kills. Sin brought death. Death can kill you in so many ways. It can kill you with heart problems. It can kill you with diabetes. It can kill you with stroke. It can kill you with corona. Death kills. Because we sin, we brought death upon ourselves. But I have good news for you. Hallelujah. Somebody say good news. What is the good news? That for Christ also suffered once for sin. Christ, he suffered once for sin. That we might live. Hallelujah. Christ took our place. Oh, he took my place on the cross. He died a shameful day, a death. They strip him naked. When you watch the movies, they try, because people are acting, they try to cover their ways so that they will not expose. But Jesus hung on the cross naked. That is what sin will do to you. If you ignore the love of God and you die, oh, in the pit of hell, demons will strip you naked. They will torture you. Hallelujah. We are telling you the news. Good news. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, you are not intelligent. Mm. The gift of God is free. Many of you living today, some few years to come, you will not be alive. And if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you will beg to come to the earth again and come and find these preachers you are looking at today. You know, a, man went, a rich man went to hell because he refused the same gospel. This same gospel we are preaching, he refused it because he thought he was rich. He thought only foolish people listen to preachers. When he find himself in hell, he was begging for a drop of water. A drop of water. In hell, you will be isolated. You will be locked down permanent. You will be isolated. There is no food. There is no love. There is no romance. <laughs> Nobody will love you over there. You will suffer. You will be lonely. Loneliness alone will kill you in hell. You will not die till you will suffer. This man suffered so much. 
wives on the earth, they are celebrating that he has died. A rich man. And he was begging for a drop of water in hell. If you die without Jesus, you will beg for a drop of water in hell. I'm telling you. Today you can eat McDonald's. You can eat KFC. You can go to whatever and eat all you want to. If you die without Jesus, you will beg for a drop of water and nobody will give you. After Jesus has gone to hell and come, there will be no return. Please listen to us. We are not wicked. We love you. Don't be too low, arrogant, and die in your shame. What do you gain? Who do you think you are? God's mercy is available today. Now, that is today, repent. Young men, repent. Turn to God and leave. You don't have life without God. We have life only in Jesus. I will never go back. I thank God for saving me. If Jesus is not your cup of tea, you are in big trouble. Turn to God. We love you so much. Jesus took your place. Every suffering he suffered on the cross. They pierced his side. They beat him. They tortured him. This is human beings torturing Jesus. Demons are more wicked than human beings. If you die without Jesus, demons, evil spirits will torture you. Those of you who have been living for the devil, you have been living for the devil, you don't want God in your life. Keep on going. Keep on going. Mama, please, today you are listening to us. Don't go home without giving your life to Jesus. You've been listening to us for some time now. God loves you. Don't just listen to us and go home. Come here and come and give your life to Jesus. And God will give you a brand new life. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. God will make you a new creator, a citizen of heaven. And he will plant heaven in you. Don't go home without Jesus. Sir, you've been listening to us for so long, even though you have been standing distance. Don't stand. Draw near. Come and give your life to Jesus. We are telling you, you may escape coronavirus, but something else will kill you. And if you die without Jesus, oh, oh, oh. If you die without Jesus, you will curse the day you were born. You will curse all the food you have ate. You ask yourself, why God, why? Why did you bring me to the world? God brought you to the world. He gave you so many years. He gave you preachers. Stupid preachers like us. <laughs> you call us. You think we are stupid. God is speaking through us. We've been talking to you. But you don't want to listen. You think you are cool. You think it's a myth. You think it's a myth story? Come on. Anybody want to give your life to Jesus? Come, come. Don't, Jesus said, if you shy before me in the presence of human beings, I will also shy you. Young people, have you given your life to Jesus? You don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. You are in serious trouble. Mama, you have listened to us for so long. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, We'll be closing soon. In the next five minutes, we'll be closed. I want you to come and give your life to Jesus before we leave over here. Don't feel shy. Don't be religious. We all need Jesus. Without Jesus, you will spend eternity away from God. Sin will separate you. When you breathe your last breath, it's not over. The word of God says, it's appointed unto men once to die. After that, judgment. Jesus said, I will judge the living and the dead. So even if you die, it's not over. Do you know Jesus? Mama, are you coming? Come, we'll pray for you. Don't go home without Jesus. Come, we'll pray for you. Come.
Let's go. She's been listening to us all the time. So.